and we're live from Hoosick Valley High School for MIAA quarterfinal action in Division Five girls basketball. Welcome everybody to Hoosick Valley. Tim Murray alongside of John Jacoby and coach. This is going to be a real matchup. We're interested to see it so far. Hoosick Valley has had a cakewalk, uh, but they're going to face some competition tonight. Yeah, we don't know. I don't know much about St. John Paul II, but I know in their path they had Munson in their bracket. Uh, Pacific Rim beat Munson, and, uh, you know, Munson played is a common opponent that Hoosick played twice and beat by double figures both times. Both schools don't know anything about each other. This is tournament play. This is what it's all about, except for the four-hour bus ride by <laughs> Hyannis. This is the type of matchup that I've been looking forward to see. Hoosick should be in a game tonight, and if they come out and play the way they're capable, hopefully they'll take care of business, but it should be a dogfight tonight as both teams have impressive records, and uh, St. Pope John Paul... Paul is going to do everything they can to try to upset the number one seed. Yeah, Pope John Paul comes into this game with a record of 17 and 6. They were originally the ninth seed in Division 5. Hoosick Valley had the number one seed. They've held, held serve throughout this tournament. What's Mark, what jumps out at me in this one, uh, John, is this is a very young uh, John Paul Lions team. They start five sophomores, and I think the issue is going to be their ability as sophomores to match up against the physical play of Hoosick Valley. Yeah, looking down at the bench, they don't have too many bigs like anyone that's, you know, six foot or taller, but they have five athletic sophomores, and they've been, you know, successful all year, so they're going to see if they can carry it on tonight. And we're just about ready now for the introduction of our starting lineups here in this Elite Eight matchup between St. John, Pope John Paul, and the Hoosick Valley Hurricanes. The Lions, as I indicated, come into this record with a 17, and with a record of 17 and six. The winner of this game goes to the final four in Division Five. We ask for Profanity, racial or sexist comments, or other intimidating actions directed at officials, student athletes, coaches, or team representatives will not be tolerated in grounds removal from the gym this evening. Noisemakers, horns, bells, or whistles are also prohibited as a result of removal from music tonight. On behalf of all of us at Music Valley, we thank you for your cooperation and enjoy tonight's contest. And now, let's meet your starters this evening. First, for the visitors from St. John Paul. Starting at goal one, the sophomore, number two, Raymond Dillon. At guard, the sophomore, number three, Marlo Jumper. Again, all sophomore starters. At guard, the sophomore, number four, St. John Paul. Lions. At forward, the junior, number ten, Caitlin Lawson. And at guard, the sophomore, number twelve, Devin Crawford. They announced three guards and two forwards. So like I said, they don't really have a starting center. They're all about the same size. And they shot the ball well in warm-ups. That guard, the junior, number 20, Ashlyn LaShore. And this is the engine of the Hoosier Valley squad, the junior Ashlyn LaShore. Yeah, as an opposing coach, I was hoping she'd be a senior, but she's had a nice career for herself, and she's the leader with the ball in her hands as a junior.
And on the national anthem, Kayla Garabini, the older sister of senior Taylor Garabini, who plays obviously for the Hoosick Valley Hurricanes. And yeah, the heart and the soul of the team, the senior leader, Taylor Garabedian. I think she's out for a big game tonight if they can get the ball in the post to her. I don't know what type of defense. I don't know anything, so I'm going to learn about St. John <laughs> Paul on the fly. But uh, they look small. My guess is they've handled pressure, and they might press themselves. Well, here we go. This is for a trip to the Final Four in the MIAA Division V. Emma Mezwa has had a strong second half of the year. They got Abby Shalaba out there. There are well, uh, and then Hannah Shea is also a senior, so they got veteran leaders out there. It'll be an interesting start. Garabedian against Dillon to jump it up, and it's controlled by the Lions. Uh, St. John Paul, long three pointer, doesn't go, and right there on the boards is Shalaba. Music Valley press, pushes it into the front. Oh, they find Mesmer low. And there you go. Good quick transition basket. Mesmer beat her opponent down the floor easily. And you're seeing this press in action. They get the ball over to Enright. You want to watch here, Marlo Jumper, number three. One of the best basketball names I've heard all year, <laughs> Marlo Jumper. And that ball stolen away. And here comes Shea into the front court. Slava from the corner. That doesn't go. But Garabedian on the boards. Kicks good, it out. Good kick out. LeSure passed down a shot because they had plenty of time in the shot clock. And now let's see what they can get. And the pass is thrown away. It'll go over to the Lions of Pope John Paul. Yeah, who's it got an easy basket, but the next couple trips down the floor by both teams have been turnovers. Opening moments of this one here at Hoosick Valley with Hoosick Valley leading two to nothing. And John Paul into the forecourt. Paul stolen. Garabinian's gonna take it coast to coast to the basket and she misses the, dunt, the bunny. And that's a break for the Lions. Yeah, turnover right at half court. The girl, uh, I don't get her name, but she picked it up right over the half court line. All right. Led to an easy turnover. All right, Shalaba now is going to set the offense for the Hurricanes. Dishes it off to LaShore. And Shalaba thought about it for a minute. Going to go, oh, beautiful inside pass to Meswar. But Shalaba to Meswar and Emma Meswar going to go to the line and shoot a pair of foul shots here. Yeah, followed by number 12, Devin Crawford, her first of the game. Again, all sophomore starting squad here for Pope John Paul. And Mesmore rolls the first one home. Mesmore has had a strong second half of the year. She does all the little things on the floor. Who's it's lucky to have her? She misses the second one. They're going to call a lane violation here. And they're going to give another shot. Uh, to Mesmore, a lane violation on Pope John Paul. Who's it going to lead? 3-0 here. 6-19 to go in this first quarter of action. And Mesmore converts the second. So two for two from the line, and Who's it going leads 4-0. Who's it going Oh, there's a ball stolen on that half-court press, and she's going to go to the basket, and another bunny missed. Shot is blocked, and here comes Pope John Paul. Jumper could not convert convert the breakaway for Pope John Paul. Mes oh, beautiful inside pass to Garabedian. And Pope John Paul is going to call a timeout here with 5.54 to go in this first quarter. And Huzik has jumped out to a 6 0 lead, John. Huzik is either going to beat you with the three or the transition baskets. And so far, it's been the transition baskets. Three in a row, right? Funny layups. Uh, both teams have missed a couple bunny layups. Uh, St. Paul had a chance to get their first points on the floor on a breakaway, and a little mishandle of the ball led to a missed layup. Huzik's missed two fast break layups, but they've made three uncontested layups, and right now, quick timeout by St. Paul trying to gather them, get them calm and down. They seem calm on the bench. They're not panicking, but it's not a good start. They've scored a lot of points in their previous games. They certainly have. 60 in their last game. Uh, 43, uh, uh, and that's it. 
43 and 60. So they average over 50 points in the tournament so far, but not off to a good start here. All right. Pope John Paul comes out of the timeout. Again, Husik Valley in that zone press. Ball down the lane. Shot does not go for Pope John Paul. That putback is, they're going to call a foul there on the putback. I believe that'll go against Abby Shalaba. No, nope, they're going to call it. A, yeah, it's going to go against Shalaba. Yeah, they got the ball just near half court, and then they went long on that one, and Marlo Jumper got her own miss and is now at the line for two. Yep. So Jumper will get two for the Lions, and she's got the first one. I was watching her warm up, and I, I, every shot she took, she made, so I'd keep an eye on her all night if I'm Husik. I might have just put the whammy on her. <laughs> I did. You did. All she right. missed the second. So it's 6-1, Husik Valley, 5.40 to go in this opening quarter of play. Pope John Paul is playing a man-to-man -man defense against the Hurricanes. Shea out top for Husik Valley. And that inside to Garabedian. Oh, good step and move by Garabedian, and she's got another hoop. Yeah, Garabedian's going to be a tough matchup for St. Paul. Yeah, you pointed that out in the opening, John. Th and, that it's going to be a matchup problem. Uh, almost another steal. So it, if St. Paul can't handle the press, it's going to be a long night for him. Right now it's 8-1, and we'll see what happens. Uh, next couple minutes are big. Pope John Paul with the ball to the basket all the way. The shot does not go, and Garrett Bedian with the rebound and a pick, kick out to LaShore. She comes up short on her shot, and it's tied up. And it will go over to Husik Valley on the possession arrow. So they'll inbound underneath their own basket, leading here 8-1 with 4.52 to go in this ballgame. Nothing easy so far on the offensive end for St. John Paul. Even when they break the press, they're having trouble. And a shot there, blocked. So, but LaShure gets her own rebound. Finds Salaba. Again, that man-to-man -man defense here for... Pope John Paul and Husik Valley will reset it with 17 seconds on the shot clock. Patience by Husik here. Let's see what they come up with. A screen and roll, it looks like. And, here, and here's LaShore for three. And it doesn't go. And a nice rebound there for the Lions. And they're going to bring that ball into the front court. And they've got a fast break. Ball thrown away. But da off of Husik Valley. Play. Dangerous pass. They had a two-on-one ahead if they sp spread out a little bit, but both girls stayed in the middle, and one girl could cover them, and she got a hand on it, but they maintained possession. 8-1, Husik Valley. And ball stays with the Lions has almost lost that on the inbound pass, so they'll inbound it. Good, smart play by Caitlin Lawson. Wasn't a great pass. Everything is nervous right now. Husik's got to keep it going while they're down because they've had some success and they're not showing it right now at the beginning. Marlo Jumper's shot does not go. Garabedian with the rebound, and here comes Husik Valley. And they're going to call travel there on Garabedian. So on the turnover, with 3.58 to go in this first quarter, John Paul will inbound the ball. Again, Husik Valley showing that zone press. That 1-1, one, 1-1-2-1 one, 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 one zone press. And it's been effective so far in this ball game. And they've got Another the trap. Lions trapped again at half court. Ball on the ground and going to be tied up in the possession area will go to Pope John Paul. Lesson number one on handling the pressure, you don't pick up your dribble just over half court because the half court line adds, is a third defender. And they've done it at least three times tonight. If they keep doing that, it's going to be a long night. Inbounds pass is tipped away. Nothing's easy. Just getting the ball in on the sideline is not easy. Huzik's all over you like they always are. Yeah, they're contesting on every possession here. And, okay, so they get the ball in, and Dylan and Jumper out front for the Lions. Huzik Valley in that man-to-man. -man. That pass is intercepted by Garabedian. A lot of turnovers. I had to Salaba. Her shot doesn't go. And I'll tell you, this ball will stay with Pope John Paul. John, who's it fell? He's missed some bunnies, boy. This, this lead could be much bigger. Yeah, no, they, uh, they've gotten four easy shots, but they could be, uh, you know, 16 points by now if they made all their bunnies. Uh, right now, St. 
John Paul can't get going. They they have no offense, and this is when you got to put a team out early because in tournament play, you don't want to keep a team hanging around. Garabinian's going to be caught with a foul. Her first. When you have an opportunity to put up a double-digit lead so early. Second team foul on the Hoosick Valley Hurricanes. Hoosick Valley now into a zone. In the game for Hoosick Valley is Marin Cappiello. Seeing her first action. Marin Cappiello. And nothing goes there. It's going to go back to Hoosick Valley. You know, my gut feeling is St. John Paul's a nice team, but they haven't felt pressure like this all year. Hoosick is a notch above it. anybody. This is the way they play, and they're the best at it. And there goes Capriello down the line. Shot doesn't go. The putback doesn't go by Meswar. And it's back to the Lions, and they run it into the front court. Jumper thought about it for a minute. She's going to take the short jumper. Doesn't go again. They're cold. And Garabinian kicks it away. Yeah. LaShore, 4-3, doesn't go again. And that was Haley McNeese, who's into the ball game. The senior. So it's 8-1 Hoosick Valley with 2.20 to go in his first quarter. Jumper with the shot. It goes in and out. Nothing there on the rebound action. Another three-pointer. That doesn't go, but wide open. And they're going to call and foul, one. count the basket. Yeah, that's the first three-pointer attempted by St. John Paul, Regan Dillon. And, uh, you know, she came up long on it, and Marlowe Jumper got the rebound and one. This is, uh, you know, they got a bucket for the first time this game, and now they're going to try to get the and one to cut the lead to four when it could be much more right now. And more importantly for Uzik Valley, jumper hits the, the foul shot. More importantly for Uzik Valley, Taylor Garabedian, their senior power forward, has two fouls, and she's going to take a seat on the bench here as we are under two minutes to go in this first quarter. 8-4, Uzik Valley. And inside the Mesmore, score it. That was very easy, too easy there. Yeah, nice screen by Lashur. She came off a flex cut, wide open again. All 10 points have been on layups. And Mezwar has six points now for Hoosick Valley. Leads all scores. Hoosick Valley is playing a 2-1-2 zone now here. They've gone away from that man-to-man. -man. The jumper doesn't go. And there, Johnny on the spot is Haley McNeese for the rebound for Hoosick Valley. Schlaba pushes it. Capiello for three! Baron Capiello from the side. And she's got a three-pointer. And yeah. Hoosick Valley with the nine-point lead, John. Yeah, no, Hoosick Valley can score points in, in bunches, and they just scored five quick ones to get it up to nine again. And the ball is lost. It's going to go over to the Hurricanes here with 59 seconds to go. In this first quarter, they lead it 13-4. to four. So with Garibaldi picking up her second foul, they went to the zone, and the thing is, in the zone, they're pressuring still as much, so... Uh, St. John Paul still having trouble getting the ball anywhere inside. Sure, to Capiello, Salaba. I thought about the short jumper, did not take it. Sure looked at it. We got 17 seconds on the shot clock. Sure, all the way to the basket and score it. Oh, that was a pretty move by Ashland Sure. Good the junior. De good defense by jumper, but better offense by Sure. 15 4. Who's it, Valley now? 25 seconds to go in this first quarter. And there goes Jumper. And they're going to call a, a travel on Jumper. So the ball on that turnover will go over to Hoosick Valley. They can take the last shot here in this quarter, John. Yeah, we'll see if they want to. They've been turning over the ball so much. If they get a good look, they might take it. But with uh, the lead, they should shoot for one. I sure thought about it on the pick and roll. Five seconds now on the shot clock. LaSure down the lane. Her shot doesn't go. And that is going to do it for the first quarter of action here at Hoosick Valley in this quarterfinal matchup between Hoosick Valley and Pope John Paul. And the score after one is Hoosick Valley 15 and Pope John 4. And so far, I think what we thought uh, coming into this one, John, is uh, the physical 
a strength of Hoosick Valley is playing a role here so far. Yeah, Hoosick's been one of the top, if not the top team in Berkshire County, and Berkshire County girls basketball is known for their physicality. Uh, St. John Paul looks like a nice young team, but I don't think, my gut feeling is they haven't faced this type of pressure all year long. Um, right now, you know, when you're the number nine seed coming in facing the number one seed, you want to make it a ball game as long as you can. Down 11, the next couple minutes will be key, especially with a key Hoosick player on the bench. Um, they haven't made any shots, and they don't look frazzled. That's one thing. They're not panicking down there, but down below a St. John Paul. But they they don't look um, they don't look quite ready to handle Hoosick's pressure. Well, we have a moment. Uh, we want to recognize uh, WMNB LP 107.1. We're being simulcasting here this evening from Hoosick Valley and, uh, of course, Northern Berkshire Community Television Channel 1302. We want to thank them for the broadcast of tonight's high school action. LaShore right down the lane. Score on that weaving action. Yeah, they ran a simple dribble drive with three handoffs, and uh, St. John Paul got lost for another layup. LaShore has four points. Jumper doesn't go. Number 15, great offensive rebound, giving St. John Paul another chance. Boy, they just have had a hard time finding the basket here. And it's probably going to be a jump. It is, and it will go over to another sophomore, number 15, Amandine. Amanda is what I'm going to call a Duravage. Uh, good offensive rebound, gives them a little size here. Let's see if she can score inside, but... Uh, right now, they need some offense. Hoosick Valley leads here, 17-4 to four with opening moments, and that inbound pass almost stolen by Schlaba. Yeah, no, they got to work for every inch of the floor, and again, um, Hoosick right now, 17 points, and I don't think they've played their A game yet. They've probably been a B minus. They missed a couple layups. They didn't score for a few minutes there. They had a great stretch to close out the quarter. But I don't even think Kuzik's hit the gas pedal fully yet, and they're still controlling the game. And they're going to call a travel. Another turnover. And Pope John Paul has got to get shots, John. They cannot turn the ball over without getting a shot. Yeah, with their size, I thought they might be a pressing team. They're strictly half-court man-to-man, and right now they're not getting any offense off their defense. For sure. Drops it off to Meswar. Can't control it. And McNeese will wheel it, away, wheel it out of there. Capiello tried to drive against the sagging man-to-man -man defense. 13 seconds on the shot clock now. LaShore back to McNeese. Got another three, Haley McNeese. Well, that's the definition of Hoosick Valley. Layups and threes, and they're doing it in spades tonight. And what makes them so difficult is everybody will take that three ball, John. Yeah, and another turnover. Yeah, it is. And... Hoosick Valley now is leading 20 to four with 6.23 to go in this first half. And they've got to find an answer early on here. Yeah, I thought a key for St. John Paul was getting off to a good start. And right now, Hoosick's got the 16 point lead. And this is where you want to put a team out when you can. And man to man action there. Two man game between Capiello and Slava, but on the steal. For Pope John Paul, and they nice pass, good interior pass, and score it there. Yeah, the sophomore Durovich, who just came in the game, got their first inside bucket, and that cuts the lead to 20 to six with 5:51 to go here. And on the knockout, Hoosick Valley will. The steal by Devin Crawford led for the transition basket the first of the night for St. John Paul. Let's see if they can get a run going. If oh, not, inside to LaShore. A beautiful interior passing. Meswar to LaShore. Yeah, right now they don't have an answer for LaShore, and most teams don't. Now they find in the backside. Oh, missed a shot. She had an open one. Look. And, and, and McNeese with that rebound. Ahead to Capiello. Her shot doesn't go, but Meswar there. Johnny on spot on the rebounding action. Numbers here for Pope John Paul. 
The layup doesn't go, and Messwar fights hard for the rebound, and it's going to go over to Husik Valley on the possession arrow. So, and into the game here for Husik Valley is Hannah Shea. She's back into the contest, and her sister, Reagan Shea, the freshman, is in the game as well. So the two Shea sisters are on the floor at the same time as Coach Frederick going to his bench here. Yeah, Mesmer's doing all the work inside, and they get four guards outside that can score and shoot. McNeese, ball knocked away, tied up, and Pope John Paul will have the ball on the possession arrow with 4.58. Third to jump go. ball of the quarter, so both teams are getting into it defensively. That's good for St. John Paul to show a little better effort, causing some tie ups. 22 to 6, Huzik Valley here in this first half of action. The long three pointer doesn't go. Pope John Paul doing a nice job on the boards. And here comes Hannah Shea. She wheels it out of there for the Hoosick Valley. And sister to sister doesn't go there. It's beautiful interior pass. And nice inbound, and they're going to call a foul there against, against uh, Reagan Dillon. She thought she had all ball on that one. Yeah, no, that was a tough call if you're St. John Paul, but Emma went up strong, and the ref saw a contact early, so they called the foul. Underneath, he's calling it. Yeah, Pope John Paul doing a pretty good job on the board. They're getting some second shots here, John. Yeah, you know what? Uh, they're struggling offensively. They've made uh, no threes yet, but they are giving themselves second chances. And Emma Metzwar gets one of two, and it... Kuzik Valley leads it here 23 to 6 with 4.25 to go in this first half. The Lions of St. John Paul trying to find an answer. And oh, that shot rims out for Reagan Dillon. And here comes Kuzik Valley now again. St. John Paul has six points and they've worked for all six of them. Well, and there's a turnover. That's unforced there. Yeah, no, Shea uh, left the corner. LeSure thought she was still there, and it went right back to him. Uh, right now, I just don't see St. John Paul getting on any runs because they methodically are working the ball up, and they have to work for everything. And another missed three. Yep, and Hunzik Valley with the rebound here as Reagan Shea comes away with it. Uh, had to LeSure. Thought about a nice up move, and drop-off pass cannot be controlled, and here comes... St. John Paul. They run out quick, and they look to run out every shot, every chance they can. And there's the foul, and it's going to go there uh, against Emma Meswar, and that's going to put Marlo Jumper on the line for two more foul shots. And yeah, that's at least two fouls against Huzik off offensive rebounds. So if Huzik can rebound the ball better, they'll, you know, stay out of foul trouble. No one's in major trouble. Garabini has two. So with the 17, now a 16-point lead, she's sitting on the bench because there's no panic. But right now, both their foul, you know, two big fouls after offensive rebounds by St. John Paul. Jumper misses the second. So it's 23-7, Hoosick Valley here with 3.25 to go in this first half of action. And the ball tied up on the, on the possession arrow. Hoosick Valley will maintain it. Yeah, a lot of jump balls this quarter. Into the game now for Pope John Paul is Victoria Ahmad. And inbounds to LaShore. And the ball is tapped and it's going to go over to St. John Paul. Yeah, Ahmad gives another taller body. Again, uh, not super tall, but a little taller than the five that are out there for Huzik. We'll see what she adds to the floor. Shot thrown up and a up and in. Another offensive rebound, Devin Crawford doing yep. everything she can to keep the St. John Paul team in the in the game. Crawford with her first bucket at 23 to 9, Hoosick Valley. They've, St. John Paul has done a good job on the boards. There's McNeese. Her three ball doesn't go, and there's a nice rebound. Not a lot of second shots. And they're gonna call fall on that action against Reagan Shea. Haven't seen it over the years. Who's it even when they miss a shot? They put pressure right on the ball, but that time there was a foul on Shea. Big stretch in the game. 14. It's anybody's ball game still. I thought Huzik was going to put them away, but they haven't scored in a couple minutes. Left. 
Three-point shot, and they're going to call a foul and a rebound in action over the top there against Amad. Good box-out action there uh, for Haley McNeese. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of contact, but a great box-out. If you box out, the refs are going to make that call nine out of ten times. And Pope John Paul showing a little bit of a press, and they back off here now. And there's... Doesn't go on the rebounding action. Oh, interior passing there. Reagan Shea to McNeese. Yeah, the offensive rebounds have been the name of the game. There's one for Huzik. Five points now for McNeese. Jumper. And she's going to bank the three ball. Yeah, the bank is open. I don't know if she called glass, but I know it's three <laughs> points on the scoreboard. 25-12 now. Huzik Valley here as we approach the two-minute mark here of this second quarter. The short may have been fouled there on the outside. And there's Reagan Shea. Her three ball back rims it. And there's her sister for three. Good ball movement. Got the open shot. One extra pass to sister to sister there. <laughs> yeah, uh, sister to sister. You had it right on there, John. Yeah, no, Reagan hit her sister, Hannah, and, uh, you know, that's several threes by Huzik. Uh, I can't think of a mid-range jumper all day for Huzik that see the layups are threes and that, and a couple free throws, but that's their game, and they're back up to 16 again. Yeah, just like that, that three ball, they've made three three-pointers here so far uh, in this ball game, and uh, uh, they've had their way pretty much offensively, John. When they've had rats, run set offenses, they've pretty much been able to get the shot that, that they want to get. Yeah, they're physically stronger than the St. John Paul team, and they, they play a style of basketball where they might go a couple trips down the floor without getting a bucket, but then they get one, and they get all of a sudden it's a nine-point run, and they got to call timeout again. <laughs> Again, I don't think, I, I've seen Huzik play four or five times this year. I don't think we're seeing their best performance. They're playing good. They're not playing great. And I've seen this team play great. So St. John Paul wants to keep them down, you know, not let, don't show their best. Don't, don't allow them to get on a run that they've been able to capable of. And try to make a run here, cut it to 10 points before halftime. And Huzik wants to do the opposite, get it in the 20s. Okay. St. John Paul inbounds the ball. A minute 35 to go in the first. Oh, there's a breakout here by Mezwar. Goes all the way to the basket. Score it. Emma Mezwar. Good defense in the interior. It led to a fast break. Easy layup again. And she has nine points to lead Hoosick Valley. 30 to 12. Hoosick Valley in this quarterfinal matchup. The winner goes to the final four. And the pass inbound was stolen there. Hannah Shea did a great job dropping from her guard position, but they turned it right back over. And here comes Jumper. Oh, boy, they're going to call a block there. And that's going to go against LaShore. Yeah, the Hoosick and fans that, aren't uh, happy about that call, but I thought Hannah moved her feet, uh, Ashlyn moved her feet a little bit, and uh, that's where they got the block. It, you know, the block charge is the toughest call in, in refereeing. Yeah, it is, and that'll put Marlowe jumper on the line. And she gets the first one. She's now 4-6 from the foul line for the Lions. With 59 seconds to go here in this first half. Second one, bounce off the rim. And Reagan Shea with the rebound. Sure now will set the offense. For the Hurricanes. And the pass tipped away. Shea and the Lions come away with it. Yes, yeah, she tried to attack baseline. It wasn't there. And Another turnover, turnover, though. Yeah, can't have that. Not against uh, this team, that's for sure. Can basically run the clock down if you want and take the last shot. Music Valley running that offense. Sure thought about it for a minute. That's war. They are working the clock. Still 13 seconds on the clock. Shock and that inbound ball to Mesuar. But LeSure is going to get a three-pointer and buries it with two, one. And that's going to do it for the first half. 
And yeah. that's a big shot for Hoosick Valley, John. Yeah, 140 left. It was a 16-point ball game. I said St. John Paul wanted to try to get it to 10, and Hoosick wanted to get to 20 with that three. It's an exactly 20-point lead, 33-13. An impressive first half of action for the Hurricanes, the number one seed in Division 5. The winner here, as we said before, goes to the Final Four, which will be played next week. At sites yet to be determined, and of course, the championship games in the MIAA tournament will be played uh, at the Sanger Center uh, in Lowell. So, and that's a beautiful location. So, uh, yeah, you know, both the boys and the girls have the number one seed. Both of them have their target. They want to get to that Lowell Center and uh, the Sanger Center, uh, Center in Lowell. And they both have a great opportunity uh, now that Hoosick girls have opened the 20-point lead. We're at halftime here at Hoosick Valley with the score. Hoosick Valley 33 and St. John Paul 13. An impressive first half of action for the Hurricanes. And John, while we have a moment, first, how about a shout-out to the Blue Devils uh, who came away with a very, very exciting victory down at Atlantic, 32-30 the other night. They are going to play in the Elite Eight, and they travel to Palmer tomorrow night to take on uh, Palmer, uh, which comes into the tournament as the sixth seed, the Drury Blue Devils number 14. But uh, kudos to the Blue Devils, John. Yeah, no, that was a never-quit attitude by the Blue Devils. They were down 22-7 at halftime, and they held Lennox to eight points in the second half. It wasn't a high-scoring game. It wouldn't uh, set any records, but uh, Drury did everything they could to keep in the game and to hold Lennox, who scored 22 first-half points to eight, and find a way to get the game-winning basket uh, uh, in the final seconds. Uh, kudos to them, and now they're playing a Palmer team who they upset last year in the Western Mass Tournament. They're going to try to do it again this year. Well, anything can happen. They're playing good basketball. They're playing good defensive basketball, that's for sure. So Coach Ian Downey's uh, uh, got the Blue Devils uh, playing probably some of their best basketball of the year here over the last week or two. So never, never a better time than tournament time to be hitting all cylinders. Yeah, well, they have uh, the leader. I know she's only a junior, and Jacinta Felix, but... Uh, Anyone that has a team with her on it, uh, she's going to battle all the way. She handles the ball, she scores, she di distributes the ball, and she's a true fan of basketball, as I see her in attendance just watching this game. She plays AAU over here, and uh, she's supporting her AAU teammates here tonight. But she's been the leader of the team all year, and the younger girls at Drury have all stepped up and had a lot of playing experience. And then Brooke Bishop, a senior, had some big threes in the game against Lennox. So, yeah, you know what? You want to play your best basketball towards the end of the year? Ian, when he came up here during the boys' game, said, we played a tough schedule for a reason, and now we're going to take that tough schedule and use it to our advantage. And they're not afraid of anybody. On the other side of the bracket, on the boys' side, John, let's talk a little bit about another northern Berkshire County team, the Drury Blue Devils. They're going to play in the Elite Eight as well on the other side of the bracket in Division Five. Yeah, they lost their two leading scorers from last year, and, uh, you know, they haven't missed a beat. Jorge Bond had a great game with 21 points last night. San Mormon had 15 points inside, so they got enough scoring, but, again, the girls are playing great defense. The boys are playing great defense. And Coach Jack Reset knows what he's doing and knows tournament play. So uh, he'll have his boys ready. Dante um, Dillard had a good game as a senior. And, uh, you know, they, they did enough last night. Miles Beauchamp hit a big three. He hadn't scored all game. And then he had nine points in the final two and a half minutes. Yeah. When you, when you, get, when you play jury, Coach Jack Reset, he's got them playing hard. Uh, defense, uh, they are competitive, uh, physical, uh, which is what you get in Berkshire County basketball, and uh, they're on a roll. When you're playing in the state tournament, you don't know what type of team you're going to face, and I saw both games for the boys, and both games, they have formidable opponents that they easily could have lost to, but they found the will, the, the goal, and Billy Robinson said it paper, you know, survive and move on, and that's what they've done the first two games in the tournament. 
Yeah, and uh, when you when you look at uh, now Hoosick Valley on the other side, they've had a pretty easy go of it as the number one seed division boys. They're going to be here tomorrow night, uh, and they're going to be taking on Hopedale. And uh, Hopedale is a, an impressive squad, very defensive-minded squad. Both teams play good defense. So that will be a very, very interesting matchup between those two teams, Hopedale and uh, Hoosick Valley, right here tomorrow night uh, in at 7 o'clock in a quarterfinal matchup in Division 5. Hoosick Valley had a well-deserved number one seed, and they're going to take advantage of it at being home. I know from playing here and coaching here many years, this is a fun gym to be in for a playoff atmosphere, and the boys have a Friday night game against Hopedale to get to the Final Four. Uh, it's going to be a heck of a night, a heck of a couple nights for Hoosick Valley and Drury. Right. Coach Polari is the athletic director for both schools, and all four of his basketball teams are still alive. Absolutely. He's got a <laughs> He's got a lot of work on they his They want to keep him busy. <laughs> well, they're certainly doing that, John. And uh, It's great uh, basketball atmosphere, and it's really a, a, a testament, as I've said uh, many times, to the quality of the coaching uh, that we have here in Berkshire County, especially in North Berkshire on the, on the boys' side, uh, Jack Rossett and Bill Robinson. Uh, for their respective teams, Drury and Hoosick Valley, and on the uh, girls' side, John Fredericks, yourself at Greylock. And uh, speaking of Greylock, you know, talking, we talked before we came on, the engine for Hoosick Valley, Ashley was sure at that point guard position. She really controls the tempo for Hoosick Valley. It's great to have somebody like that on your team. And you've got one at Mount Greylock coming along. Uh, I think we're going to be talking about her for several years to come. Yeah, Tanley Drake is an eighth grader, and, uh, you know, I'm hoping and I'm confident that she's going to turn into the player like Ashlyn LaSure, where you're the general driving the bus. Uh, as an eighth grader, she took charge, handled the ball. Uh, she missed several games this year with an ankle injury, but she came back for our last game, had 19 points, and scored the game-winning basket with 25 seconds left. Uh, yeah, we got something special there in her, and she she loves the game of basketball, and she's just going to keep getting better and better. Then we have a, a lot of younger players, so we're hoping to move forward in the right direction, and uh, we have an eighth-grade point guard to hopefully lead us that way. Well, bright future for Mount Greylock as well, and, and of course, you talk about you know all the teams at Berkshire County, the 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 in inner county play between. Uh, the teams uh, of Berkshire County, Hoosick, Drury, Wakona, uh, Monument, they're all Pittsfield to cut. They're all tough, tough games. Uh, the teams play hard-nosed defense, and, uh, of course, that only can make it better, a better team as the season goes along. Well, for years, uh, Hoosick and Drury and even us a few years back, uh, when you play the Pittsfields, the Waconas, and the Taconics, it's going to get you tournament ready. And, um, you know, we play great opponents in and out. I know we don't play everybody anymore, but Berkshire County girls basketball gets you ready for Western Mass and the state tournament. And uh, Drury proved that by upsetting Lennox, which is also a Berkshire County team. But then they, um, they're going to see what they can do against Palmer tomorrow. Okay, both teams are back on the floor here at Hoosick Valley. We're at halftime. The score at halftime, Hoosick Valley 33 and Pope John Paul 13. Run down the scoring in the first half for Pope John Paul. They were led by their leading scorer, Marlo Jumper, the sophomore. Uh, she finished the first half with nine points. Devin Crawford had two and Amadine Duravej had two to complete the scoring uh, for Pope John Paul. On the other side for Hoosick Valley, Marin Capiello had a three-pointer and she finished with three points in that first half. Hannah Shea also had a three-pointer and finished with three points. Uh, Taylor Garabedian, who was in foul trouble in that first half, uh, had four points, but it was the play of, um, and, and, and Haley McNeese had five, Emma Meswar and Ashlyn Short each had nine points apiece. So you get that balanced scoring for Hoosick Valley. It is. It's tough to, bit, to defense them. They've got several players out there at any one time. They're, they're not afraid to shoot the three ball, and they also can take it to the basket. No, when you have your leading scorer only getting four points, and those came early in the quarter, 
and you're able to put up a 20-point lead, you got to feel good about your chances. The depth of Hoosick Valley, they had one, two, three, four, five, six different players score, and except for Garabedian, they all had five. Yep. Five or more. Uh, Capiella only had one three, but a big three. Well, we'll see if Pope John Paul can make a run of it here in this second half. It's been Hoosick Valley so far. They're gonna, Pope John Paul is going to have uh, the basketball first to start the second half. I have a feeling they're going to go to Garabedian early, kick it out, and they're going to get some layups and threes, and it's going to be over in about four minutes, and St. John Paul is going to try to prove me wrong. Jumper. The shot. Oh, point blank range. Didn't go for Dervich. And here comes Susick Valley. And a shake. Offense will set again. And Pope John Paul. There's a long three ball by Shalaba. Gets her own rebound. Score it. Offensive rebounds again have been the name of the game. And that's the first bucket for Abby Shalaba. Another layup and another turnover. Yeah. It's going to be tough for Pope John Paul to come back from this situation. They've you, got you, to get shots, John. You're looking at the game, and who's up 35-13, and they still got their full press going and working, and St. John Paul hasn't pressed all night. Again, this is a young Pope John Paul squad. There is LaShore for three. Oh, boy. The second three ball for LaShore. She's two for two from the three-point line. Again, they score in bunches. This is a big turnover again. So far, Huzik scored both baskets, and St. John has turned over the ball twice. Garabedian's shot there for three was partially blocked, and here comes Pope John Paul. They trail 38-13 to to Huzik Valley with 6.40 to go here in this third quarter. Still got the press on, almost another steal by LaSure. And there's a three-point shot there. Long, hard rebound, and Durovich. Oh, misses a point-blank shot again. They've got to convert those, and Garabedian into the front court. Up and under, she's gonna. Oh, they're gonna call a travel there. Yeah, you know that's what happens when you sit for a while. You want to get back in the play a little force there, uh, but they called travel instead of the foul. It could have went either way. And here comes Crawford. Ball stolen. Getting they're, the turnovers. They've got to get shots. There's no doubt in my mind they don't face pressure like they're seeing tonight, all year long. I will tell you, they are feisty on the back end. And the ball's going to go over to the, to the Lions on that turnover with 5.59 to go here in the third quarter. And it's Huzik Valley leading 38-13. to 13. Yes, see, John Paul is uh, got to get some offense going because they are trailing by 25, and they don't look like they can get much going in waves. And here comes Huzik Valley. On the rebound there was Shea doing a nice job on the boards for the Hurricanes tonight. Out front, ball tapped away. Shalaba Good on the hustle floor. by both girls. Shalaba came up with it. And Shea to Shalaba into the corner for LaShore. This is the three point, but there's Garabini, and she's going to go to the line, being fouled underneath on the rebound. Yeah, I think Hannah Shea's quietly had a nice game, even though she doesn't have a ton of points. She's getting rebounds and control on the play. And uh, LeSure is scoring, and Garabedian just got a big offensive rebound. Taylor goes to the line for the first time tonight, and she misses the first one. St. John Paul are, are obviously got the scouting report. They're putting two girls on Taylor, and uh, she'd like to hit one to get it going. And there's a violation there. <laughs> it took a while to call it, but. Yeah, no, they let her continue the shot. You gotta try to make that, but you got a free one because three girls from St. John Paul stepped in early. And there. she makes good the second time, John. Yep, you gotta take advantage of those breaks, and they and she did. 39-13, Hoosick Valley, 5.15 to go. And there's somebody wide open. Oh, they had the open pass by 
St. John Paul would have been an easy bunny, but it was overthrown, so Husik Valley gets the ball again. Yeah, they're showing their youth right there. That could have been an easy two, just overthrew the pass a little bit. Pope John Paul has yet to score here in this second half with 4.59 to go. Husik Valley working a ball around the perimeter. LaShore, the up and under doesn't go. And nice rebound in there by Pope John Paul now. They try to get their offense going here. And this foul there on Schlaba. And that's going to put Jumper on the line for the Lions. With 4.37 to go here in this second half of action. The winner of this quarterfinal matchup going to the final four. You don't want to see your season end, but if you have five sophomores starting, they're hoping to make a good showing in the second half, end with some positive momentum. I, I'm impressed with Jumper, not just on the offensive end. She's scrappy and all over the play uh, on the defensive end as well. Yep, and she converts both foul shots. And now there's a timeout on the floor by Husik Valley. Coach Frederick wasn't happy they gave up two points. So, uh, <laughs> he's just, he's just going to check in with them. And uh, good timeout there. You know, at four minutes left, you got five of them. You might as well use them. Let his team know that right now, don't let them think they can get back in this ballgame. The depth of Husik has been good all year. I, I, we only play him once now. We used to play him twice a year. Uh, they have uh, a number of options. If you shut down one, the other one's going to step up, and that's what happened in the first half. Garabedian uh, had foul trouble, and everybody else. Uh, the Lashur always steps up. I know uh, I try to focus on Lashur and then put a big on Garabedian and make the other players beat us, and they usually do because they're, they're talented and they're, they have depth everywhere. I think Emma Mesbar stepping up gives Huzik a great chance moving forward because that gives them additional scoring, and she came out uh, a-blazing tonight as well. Yeah, Ashlyn LaShore leads the Hurricanes scoring so far tonight. She's got, tw uh, she's got uh, uh, 12 points to lead all scores in this ballgame. Yeah, it's spread out nice for Huzik, as it always is. Okay. Pope John Paul went to a 2-3 zone. Salava misses the three-pointer and a nice rebound. Pope John Paul has done a good job on the boards tonight. Yeah, especially for an undersized team. And they're going to call a 10-second violation there. And then once again, the ball turns back over to Husik Valley. Yeah, you know, sadly right now, uh, St. John Paul probably has more turnovers than points, and that's not what, not the game plan to beat Huzik. They thrive on turnovers. And Huzik Valley now approaching a four-minute mark here in this third quarter, running their offense on the perimeter. Shea to Shalaba. 2-3 zone has slowed them down a little bit, but they'll be patient. they got a big lead. And I guarantee you they'll get a good look. And there and it there is. There it is from Damn. Shea. And just like that, John, a three-pointer. Yeah, you go to a 2-3 zone, and, and Huzik can put a little slowdown on there and wait for their shot. The only chance to get is to turn them over. Oh, good entry pass there. Oh, and the misser was jumper. Yeah, but the putback there by Amanda Durovich. I would say 10 out of their 17 points have been on putbacks. There's Mesler from the corner. Her three ball doesn't go. And the rebound there to Pope John Paul. They have the ball in the offense and then the breakout. Nice, nice play pass. there. Excellent pass. Reagan Dillon did a great job finding Jumper coming down late. That's their first 4 nothing run of the night. 42-19, Hoosick Valley. And that's going to put... Hannah Meswar to the line as she is fouled on the shot. Yeah, LaShore did a great job driving 94 feet and then dumping it off to Mesra. She got fouled from behind. A foul will go against Marlo Jumper. That's her first. Music Valley. Control of Meswar. This is the first. She's going to get another one. Three for five from the foul line so far tonight.
Back to rim the second. Uh, there but is Garabedian up and rebound. under. And I got a call foul on that shot. And Garabedian go to the line now. So Mesmer missed both of them. But Garabedian right there. And she's going to get a pair herself here with 2.58 to go in this, in this third quarter. And Garabedian solid there. She's got the first one. She's got another one into the game. Now Haley McNeese, Marin Capiello. You know, in. having a young team this year, we've been down 24 points. You've got to play one possession at a time and just keep working at your game. Uh, St. John Paul went on a 4 nothing run, but who's answered with a bucket and a free throw? Durovich down the lane. Up and under. Nice offensive move there by Devin Crawford. And she's got her second bucket of the game. 43-21, Usyk Valley. They've got the 22-point lead. 2-3 zone again, slowing it down for Husik, but the clock is not St. John Paul's friend right now, so yeah. uh, it's a little surprising. Oh, nice entry pass. Oh, that was a perfect execution there, John. Garabedian yeah, no. with the bucket. I, uh, Huzik has seen enough zone this year. They're going to be patient and get good looks. They made a three and a layup so far out of the 2-3 zone. Jumper thought about it. Ball tipped away. But they find, and score it there for Durovich. Yeah, Durovich has scored at least six points, I think, all inside. And she's done a nice job since she came into the game. 45-23, Huzik Valley. Oh, they find Mesuar up and under. Garabedi and uh, Emma Mesuar. Great, great cut by Mesuar and great find by Garabedi. Mesuar with 11 points now. 47-23. Husik Valley here in this quarterfinal matchup. Everything's hard for St. John Paul. They're staying with that man-to-man -man defense. Capiello. And goes around, and Doe oh, had a three-point opportunity there to follow go against Marin Capiello. Yeah, she took a step back dribble, set up the lane around the baseline. No one came over to help, and she got herself right to the basket, almost an and one, but now she's going to have to earn it at the free throw line. So Michaela Enright here, the sophomore. And she gets the first one the hard way. And it's so redundant. We call up the class of so many sophomores on this uh, Pope John Paul team. The tough thing is sophomore girls aren't going to grow that much more. With boys, you might grow, grow four or five more inches. They're going to get better with experience, though, so they do have a bright future ahead of them. No question about it here. Approaching the one-minute mark here in this third quarter. There's a long shot there. It doesn't go. And Mesmer on the inside. Ball is blocked. Fundamentally, Huzik just does a lot of things right. You have a long three-point shot, and Mesbrough's got weak side inside position and gets the ball back for Huzik. Inbound to Garabini for the short jumper. It doesn't go, but there is Mesbrough. Her ball tapped away, and it's they'll, McEnright who comes away with it. They'll take that shot all night long. Garabini is deadly from the elbow jumper. And here comes jumpers. Long jumper from the corner, doesn't go. Jumper's gonna have it right to the ba basket. The put back goes. And right, just like that, Durovich, she's been, I mean, sorry, Devin Crawford, she's got uh, six points here in this second half. Up and under, count it. And Garabedian will go to the line for a three point opportunity. Which, yeah, that was a great basket by St. John, and eight seconds later, Huzik matches it. And possibly getting one more point out of it. it you can't match baskets right now, and that's what's going to happen the rest of the night. And a three-point play is completed by Garabedian. And she's now got 11 points. Taylor Garabedian, we're under 20 seconds to go here in this third quarter. Jumper. And a jump shot there is good by Caitlin Loss in her first basket. And Pope John Paul starting to respond a little here a little bit better offensively, John. Yeah, 15-point quarter. And that's going to do it for the third quarter of action here at Hoosick Valley. It is Hoosick Valley 50 and Pope John Paul 
23. Yeah, they had their 28, best, I'm sorry. Best offense of the night, a 15-point quarter, but Hoosick had a 17-point quarter to up their lead to 22. Uh, we got eight minutes left in the ball game, and I don't see the defensive pressure uh, and the fast baskets coming for St. John Paul. Hoosick wants to execute like they've been doing the last few trips down the floor, especially against the zone. Keep getting better and better because it looks like they're eight minutes away from punching their ticket to the Final Four. Well, they've got eight minutes to go before they can do that, and they have the commanding 22-point lead. And while we have a moment, we want to thank Northern Berkshire Community Television for the broadcast of tonight's MIAA quarterfinal tournament action here at Hoosick Valley. Of course, our producer on this broadcast, Peter Gentile, along with our sound man, Ryan Palsy. Thanks to both of them. They've done a great job. They set everything up here today for us. And uh, as usual, they do a fantastic job in bringing uh, these broadcasts to you. And, of course, we want to recognize our simulcasting partner tonight, WMNB LP 107.1 FM. And we're going to be right back here tomorrow night for quarterfinal action. Hoosick Valley and Hopedale. All right, Hoosick Valley is going to have the ball here to start. And right off the bat, Pope John Paul steals the steals the, the ball. And jumper is tied up on it. It's going to stay uh, with Pope John Paul. Yeah, I understand what jumper was trying to do. She was trying to draw the foul. You got to make the layup there and then try to force some pressure. Turnovers will get you back in the game, but they got to keep going and going. Jumper shot is blocked and over the top. It's going to go against, uh, I believe that's uh, Crawford. We'll get the call with the with the foul, Devin Crawford. So, yeah, they have extended their defense a little bit, but it looks like it's just their guards are up. They did force a turnover out of bounds to start the quarter, and here's another one. Yeah, Mary Capiello, and a shot doesn't go in. Capiello with the rebound. Again, just great transition basketball. LaSure easily could have fouled there. She played defense on her but didn't get her body on her, and they forced the tough layup, and they missed it. And Jose Fallow will run some clock here. They've got the 22-point lead. And you can see they're trying to shut off uh, Garabedi in there, John, at the foul yeah, line. Yeah, they're double-teaming her. They, they know their scouting report. She's their leading scorer. And uh, they're doing a good job on her, but everybody else on Hoosick has stepped up tonight to open up the 22-point lead. Oh, that's a killer there for Pope John Paul. They're on the foul with only six seconds left on the shot clock. So Hoosick Valley will get a reset on the shot clock here with 7.04 to go in the ball game and the 22-point lead. Yeah, they know. They're, uh, Hoosick's being patient. They usually like to score in bunches, but they're playing a right smart game now. And a rebounding action goes over to Pope John Paul. They have the ball. Yeah, I'm impressed with Durovich. She didn't start, but she's been impressive as a sophomore coming off the bench for St. John Paul. Music Valley can tell. Oh, nice cut to the basket there. Long shot. Back rim there. There's another rebound by Durovich. Just brought it down. And when you do that against Huzik, you're going to get tied up. McNeese forcing the jump ball. Back to Huzik. Shalaba and Shea, Hannah Shea back into the ball game, uh, replacing McNeese and Capiello. 6.30 to go here. Huzik Valley with the 50 to 28 lead here. Yeah, and again, you want to get some points early and start the comeback, and they haven't scored this quarter yet. Neither team has. But that's okay for Huzik. Yeah, they want to keep it like, just like this. And they're willing to run clock, as you said, John. The clock is their friend here tonight. And there's eight seconds on the shot clock now. There's LaSure on the cut to the basket. The up and under is blocked. And so who's the going to inbound? They're only going to have three seconds on the shot clock. Yeah, three seconds is a lifetime baseline <laughs> out, out of bounds. So you're okay there. It was a great backdoor cut by LaSure. Good find by Shalaba. And let's see what they do out of bounds. Inbound to Mezwar. He's going to take the quick shot. 
got it for three. Oh, you you were so right, John. <laughs> three seconds is a lot of time. I, yeah, from half court, I think three seconds is a lot of time, especially with Huzik. 53-28 now, Huzik Valley with the 25-point lead. 5.40 to go in this ball game. And a ball knocked away by Shea. Yes. Yeah. I've been really impressed with Emma Benzema tonight because she's doing the dirty work inside, but she made a three at the buzzer there, and uh, she's playing a nice game the second half oh, of the year. Oh, ball taken away by Shea. Ahead to Travel. Benzema. They're going to call it travel, yeah. I gave her too much praise there. She's not a point guard yet, but <laughs> she's a three-point shooter and a, and a ferocious rebounder underneath there. She's uh, the big reason why Huzik has been played so strong as of late. All right, jumper now for the Lions of St. John Paul in the to the front court. Nice drop off pass. That shot, whoa, just won't go for St. John Paul. And they're gonna call a foul there. That's a tussle there. Reagan Dillon on the foul for Usyk Valley. Yeah, with a little shove after the play, Dillon's gonna get a speaking to, but uh the refs decided not to give her a technical after that physical play. That's the third team foul there for the Lions here. 5 9 a little bit of frustration. You know, we're coming to the end of the season, although these, yes. these girls, most of them sophomores for Pope John Paul, they got long careers ahead of them. I like the spunk of Dylan, uh, number two for St. John Paul, but there she got a little frustrated. She's missed a couple layups, some in and outs, uh, and, and she got the frustration out. And we'll see if her night's done or if not, but uh, she plays with a lot of energy, and that was uh, a good choice not to give the technical and give her time to calm down. 4.50 to go in this ball game. It's a 25-point Hoosick Valley lead. And the ball snapped away, and it'll go uh, to Pope John Paul. They'll inbound the ball. And Pope John Paul gets the ball in. And they're of edge. No go there. Garrett Bedian. Gonna Swing it wide with LeSure is going to run in the front court, and she's going to back it out a little bit. Yeah, no, if it was a five-point game, I think she's shooting that shot, but smart play by the junior leader out there. And Chalaba. Again, the clock with the 25-point. Who's the lead? That is their friend here. And they're going to use it. And there's Garabedian. And that, oh, that... In, inside play there by Garabedian. Good use of her body to make the catch and a better use of her body to step through for the bank shot jumper. She's got 13 points now. Yeah, you know, I knew she'd have a good second half after sitting so long. And a put back there. Once again, Durovich. Yeah, no, she's the most impressive player I've seen today and she didn't start tonight. So they got a good group of girls coming back. That's for sure. The only problem is they're sitting in the 2-3 zone and Huzik's taking their time, milking the clock, and then usually getting a good look to boot. So uh, right now it's not a recipe for a comeback, but they're, they have scored some points this second half at least. That's where Garabedi and she'll take the jumper. Doesn't go. And that's and Slava, offensive rebound. And that's going to go throw away. I believe it'll go back over to Pope John Paul here with 3.22 to go. And... Hoosick Valley looks like they're going to the Final Four in Division Five once again. Yeah, no, they uh, all but punched their ticket with this lead because uh, St. John Paul can't play fast enough to score that many points. And a foul there by Slava. And it's going to be the second team foul here against Hoosick Valley. And again, Hoosick's going to play to the final whistle up 25. They're still putting tremendous ball pressure on it right there. It's just a little too aggressive. And getting some younger players yep. in. Coming in the game, number one, Bella Scalati. Well, not younger players, but uh, new players. <laughs> new players. In. Right. She's, she's old. She's a junior yeah, yeah. of this squad. And good pass there. Durovich doesn't get it. But again, good offensive rebounding here. 
they, they, they are around that ball, so I was going to be called with the foul. They've done a pretty good job on the boards here. They just haven't been able to convert, and they've had too many turnovers. You know, we've seen teams all year when we go to Springfield and now we're going to the Cape. We have teams that have nice records and do a good job, but they are not ready to face Kuzik's ball pressure and defensive effort, but they have impressed me with their ability to rebound. And she gets one of two. Devin Crawford now has seven points for the Lions. And we're under three minutes to go here. It's 55-31, a 24-point lead for the Hurricanes. And as you said, John, the running clock, there's a three-pointer, and it is good. <laughs> Hannah, Shea, and that's just about the final dagger here now for Hoosick Valley as yep. they lead at 58-31. Ball snapped away. Jumper for Scalati doesn't get it. It's going to put the put back. It doesn't go. As we're working hard on the boards, ball snapped away. And they're going to call a block on Mesmer, and that's going to put Jumper on the line, and she's going to have a pair for the Lions here. Trailing 58-31 with 2.16 to go. It's been an impressive all-around performance here by the number one seed, the Hoosick Valley Hurricanes, who now will advance to the final four. Yeah, they got up 8 nothing, I believe, and before St. John Paul uh, made a free throw to make it 8-1 for a long time. And then after being 8-1 for a long time, Huzik went on a 9 nothing run to go to 17-1, uh, and they haven't looked back since. Jumper gets one of two. Another offensive rebound, though, for the St. John Paul yep. Lions. They are battling on the boards. They certainly are. Jumper going to take it all the way to the basket. Doesn't get that one to go. And yeah, you know, you work so hard to get a good look, and then you finally get a decent look, but you rush it because you're worried about the defense coming back. Yeah. They're going to take out Hannah Shea. She's had a nice game for Hoosick Valley here tonight. Shea with nine points, courtesy of three three-pointers. Yeah, a very business-like performance. They didn't play their best basketball in the first quarter early in the game, but they had a 10 double-digit lead. They did what they had to, and they got better as the game went on, and they, they've never been threatened tonight. End of the game, Reagan Shea, her sister. Scalati. And on the end line, that ball will get turned over to Hoosick Valley. And checking into the game now, Alana Luciano for Hoosick Valley. And somebody's got to come out. And that is going to be Haley McNeese, number 14. Yeah, you just, you got a 24-point lead. You want to keep working on some things, but you just don't want any injuries now. You got the game wrapped up. And who's it going to let the clock go and start to get some players uh, from their bench out there? And as you say, John, uh, St. John Paul, they played that second half uh, in a zone, and, and that really wasn't the prescription to get back into the game. No, they had a great um, third quarter offensively with 15 points. And but senior Taylor Garabin checking out and she had a big second half for the Hurricanes. Yeah, you know what? They they, they just want to move on and survive and, and, and Garabedian will step up in the last two games as a senior leader uh, and leading scorer. And there's Durovich on the block. Nice move, but can't get it to go. Mezwar wheels out of there. To Capiello. We're under a minute to go here. And the shore is in no rush. Look yeah, at look at that inside pass. And Luciano to Mesmer. What a beautiful play there for Hoosick Valley. Last shot of the game for Hoosick as it's under 35 seconds. They probably won't shoot again. A put back. It's going for the Lions. And they score Durovich. I'm sorry, that was Devin Crawford. And that is going to do it here as Hoosick Valley leads this game 60-35. to 35. 
and they're running down the clock here. Congratulations to the Hurricanes. They are going to the Division Five Final Four. And that's the final buzzer here in Hosek Valley. Yeah, they gave a great effort tonight, did all the little things, survived when Garabini got in foul trouble, and they were never threatened by an overmatched St. John Paul team tonight. They took care of business. They certainly did in an impressive, impressive performance here. Hoosick Valley wins it 60 to 34. And we're going to run down the scoring here while we have a minute four. The Pope John Paul Lions, uh, they had, uh, they were led uh, by their leading scorer, uh, Marlo Jumper. She had 13, unofficially, 13, 12 points, I'm sorry. Uh, and Devin Crawford with a nice effort in the second half. She finished with nine, as did Amanda Durovich. She had eight. Caitlin Lawson had two points, and that rounded out the scoring here for the hurricane uh, for the Lions for the Hurricanes unofficially Marion Capiel had three points Hannah Shea the senior three three-pointers in this game she finished with nine had a nice ball game for uh, Hoosick Valley and Emma Meswar finished with 16 points Haley McNeese had five five points Ashlyn LaShore Finished with 12 points. Scalaba with two. And then we had 13 points for Taylor Garabini. And so you see that pretty balanced scoring there by, by Husik Valley. And you had five different players, John, scoring, uh, shooting a three-pointer. And there's athletic director, director Jeff Polari. And they're being presented with the Final Four and the Western Mass Championship and now the Final Four banner for Hoosick Valley. And Hopefully we'll have a couple of post-game interviews here with some representatives of Hoosick Valley. Yeah, well, they're enjoying the moment right now. You know, it's a big deal. You go to states and you make it to the Final Four. You're the number one seed. You're expected to go there, but you still got to make it there, so they're enjoying their moment. Absolutely. They've held serve. They were the number one seed. And it's, it's Coach John Fredericks has indicated, you know, in the division, they're going to get every team's best shot, and you got to respond to it. Knowing that the other team is going to come out and try to try to knock it knock you off, so they. I think they were fortunate tonight to face the St. John Paul team, who just weren't quite ready to match up with them. Uh, they were overmatched from the get go, and Huzik just simply took care of business. <laughs> they certainly did. Yeah, I want a horse race. We got, we got, <laughs> yeah, and you can see the team on the floor here. Uh, getting some pictures taken by friends and family here with the Final Four banner. Got to be a, you know, people don't realize, John, how much work the coaches and the players put into into it's not only in the off season it starts right after thanksgiving and and here we are in march it's it's a long season with a lot of work uh, that's I, put in i think the season is uh, 365 days for these who's the hurricanes they got a great, great aau program they are dedicated basketball players they put in the hours and the work and uh for them the hard work paid off tonight with a win and a, a trip to the final four they know they, they don't, they're not satisfied with just getting there. They're expecting to take it all away. And it'll be interesting what other teams join them. I think they're the, are they the first one in or did they? They, they, are, they are the first one in uh, tonight. And, uh, but they're going to have a matchup yet to be determined as you look at, uh, at, the, at the bracket now. We get to go through this for a second. Hoosick Valley is going to play uh, the Renaissance winner of or the... 
One of these four right. teams, Run, I don't know who won it's those. It's going to be Renaissance, the winner of the Renaissance Westport game. Uh, Westport won uh, the game. So they're playing tomorrow night um, uh, at, uh, at uh, uh, they're going to be playing at uh, Westport, I'm sorry, at Renaissance in that uh and quarterfinal game. Right. The winner will play Hoosick Valley at a site yet to be determined and next Renaissance week. Renaissance is an undefeated team as they knocked off uh, as long as they won Western Mass. I'm not sure if they held on to win Western Mass. They, they, they did. They were undefeated when they beat Drury in the yeah. first round of Western Mass. and uh, so that we, No matter who they take, uh, face, Westport or Renaissance, uh, it'll be a different atmosphere than tonight's game. Tonight the number one seed looked like the number one seed, and they took care of business against a young uh, game, but uh, undermatched uh, St. John Paul. Right. So uh, that will be determined tomorrow night when they play um, as well. The other on the other side of the bracket, West Boylston, the number two seed, will play Maynard, uh, and that's going to decide. They're the seventh seed, so both those schools held serve. Um, they'll play. Uh, on the other side of the bracket. And, of course, yet to be determined, Drury, the Blue Devils, they go to Palmer. And uh, that's kind of a rematch of, of uh, games that has played over the years, both in the tournament and the regular season. Yeah, uh, no, a couple years ago, my first year at Mount Greylock, uh, we were the nine seed and we upset South Hadley, the number one seed. And then the next year, we were hoping to make a, you know, a run. And uh, in our second round, we had to face South Hadley again, and we couldn't surprise them that second time. So Palmer is not going to be surprised by Drury's, you know, uh, right overall record. They know they're going to be in a dogfight. Drury's going to play tremendous defense. So now that both teams know each other, it'll be interesting the second time around. But I know for sure the young Drury Blue Devil team is working hard every day to get themselves in a position where they might not have expected to, but one more win against, one more upset against Palmer, and they get themselves in the Final Four to join this Hoosick team. And well, switching gears here for a minute, John, and going over to the boys' side of things, we'll be right back here tomorrow night as Hoosick Valley will take on uh, Hopedale in a quarterfinal matchup. Uh, with a Final Four berth in the Division Five Boys uh, MIA tournament on the line, so uh, both Hoosick Valley and uh, Boys and Girls number one seeds, and that'll be uh, uh, should be a great game. Uh, uh, Hopedale, from looking at Hopedale, watching Hopedale, uh, their their scores um, uh, throughout this tournament and in their regular season, uh, they appear to be a very, very tough defensive squad. So when you take both those teams, uh, Hoosick Valley plays real good defense themselves. That could be a low-scoring affair, that's for sure. Yeah, no, uh, you know, Hoosick can score and, and for multiple players, uh, but they're going to face a team most likely they haven't faced. Obviously, they played monument and athletic teams like that in their couple of their tough losses, but they uh, Hopedale is going to be a game match uh, tonight. I thought St. John Paul was uh, never gave themselves a chance. They got off to a bad start. I think tomorrow night, Hope Deal is going to come in with a tougher attitude, a more defensive effort, and uh, Billy Robinson is going to have his team ready, but I think it will be a good matchup, and the winner gets to go join the girls' team to the Final Four. And right outside, right now, right on the floor, uh, Athletic Director Jeff Polari has brought out uh, the – ladder, and uh, I think he's going to let uh, Hoosick Valley cut down the net here, signifying their uh, f appearance in the final four, and the girls here have been here before, um, they have won the state title two times, and they're looking for an opportunity to try to win it again, it gets harder every step of the way, that's for sure. Yeah, no, it's a fun experience. they got to train them a little bit. You're supposed to take a t piece of the net with you, but they, they are enjoying yeah. just cutting it down. Yeah, that's Haley McNeese. And, uh, Made popular from the NCAA tournament. We've seen it every year, and it's, uh, that's right. it's fun for these girls. High school basketball is about winning and competing, but it's also just being about a team and being a unit, and they're enjoying the moment out there together as a team. Well, hopefully we're going to be able to wrangle up some of the players and Coach Frederick to just talk to us a little bit about the game and, and their feelings about what happened here tonight. Uh, I know they're 
really enjoying the moment here at Hoosick Valley as they have come away with the victory here, 60 to 34. Two years ago, we uh, were in the tournament and we had a play at Carver. Uh, it was a, it was a dog fight. We lost by eight. We were the 27 seed. They were the um, we were the 25 seed. They were the eight seed, and we. Um, Gave them a dog fight. We were up by two in the second half. We lost a tough one, but that three and a half, four hour ride home was long. <laughs> Hi, uh, you know, St. John Paul has to go to Hyannis. If I made it to Carver, they got to go another half hour further than that. So, you know, I hope they get home early. I understand why we played the game at 530, but it's still going to be a long night. They got a young team. They got a good future in front of them. They now know what a championship team looks like. They Huzik hasn't won the championship team yet this year, but they are. They have the championship pedigree in them, and they saw that team tonight. And uh, it was not a competitive match, but hopefully St. John Paul can take something out of it. Uh, and appreciate the year they had getting to the final eight, which is great with so many young players. Well, John, one of the things you, you got to you comment here just quickly uh, on the state of the, of the tournament here. Hoosick Valley, they won their opening round game uh, in the round of 32, and they won that one by 50 points. They then came back in the round of 16 and won by 31 points, and... They have won here in the quarterfinals, the Elite Eight, by 26. So they've had had it their way uh, throughout this uh, uh, throughout this tournament. And at some point, they're going to run into you. You've got to believe they're going to run into somebody. That first crunch game where they're going to have to come up with a big shot will test their will because they haven't been tested yet. Even tonight, you know, their lowest point spread. They could have won by 40 or 50 tonight. They slowed it down and played for the win uh, because once uh, St. John Paul went to the zone, they were in no rush, and they slowed themselves down to keep the clock moving. Uh, so it was just a simply impressive win tonight, and so far all three of their games have basically been no contest. And, you know, John, also for, you know, the younger players here in Hoosick Valley, uh, it, it gives them a little bit of motivation they go forward in their own careers to try to duplicate this. It's very difficult to, to do that, as we know. I mean, there are many twists and turns in a, in a, in a high school basketball season. It, it, it's been several years now, but Hoosick was not a strong program about 15 to 20 years ago. They had a young group of freshmen come in, uh, Billy Robinson's daughter, Sam, yep. um, Emily Rossi, and a bunch of uh, Gail, yeah. I'm dr drawing a blank on a few yeah. names, and I, I shouldn't have mentioned Rodowitz. One. Rodowitz. They had some great players, and since then, the goal in Adams is to be a Hoosick Valley girls basketball player. It's no longer a softball or soccer town. Uh, when I, I coach girls soccer here in 91 and 98, and it was a soccer town. Uh, we, were, we were pretty competitive in soccer. We won three division titles in a row. And they had Nikki Valiers, probably the best player, the leading scorer on the wall. Right. Uh, and they ha she was trying to hunt people to play basketball. Melanie Mishik and Beth Rivard played both soccer and basketball, but they liked soccer better. And Nikki, um, they had a great team and a great run. But then they went through some years of downtimes. But now the program and your desire when you're in third, fourth grade to, uh, and you're an athlete, you want to be a Hoosick Valley Hurricane and a girls basketball player uh, because they have the tradition now and they work hard at it. They get, you know, they get some you know, discredit sometimes because they've been winning so much and some people don't like always like a winner. But they work hard at it. They work hard at it real hard in the off season, and they know how to play the game of basketball. I, um, I am impressed with their depth, which I didn't know if they would have that this year, and they had it. Um, so they have a legitimate shot of winning a, a title, and, uh, you know, the future of Huzik is still bright. Well, hopefully we're going to have, just before we go off the air here, just a couple of uh, uh, quick words from hopefully either Coach Frederick or one of uh, the players we don't know yet. 
Every uh, year they have a glue player coming back, and and this year, uh, next year, it'll be L Ashlyn Lachure will be the glue player, and um, and Mesmer, both juniors, and then they got to get those sophomores and freshmen to step up now because they are starting to get a, a little sophomore junior uh, heavy, and it'll be interesting where they are next year. But this year is all they care about right now. Right, uh, they've got uh, you know the Nuku is coming back. Uh, you got, like you just said, Ashlyn LeShore and, and Emma Mesler. That's a pretty good start uh, for next year for Hoosick Valley. Yeah, they lost, uh, so, you know, they're losing Hannah Shea, uh, Haley McNeese, Garabedian, and Abby Shalaba. Uh, right. So those are four key players they're missing, and they're going to see if they have anyone to step up and take their place. But again, right now down on the floor, they're enjoying the moment. Right. And another picture that's going to go into uh, the trophy case here for uh, Hoosick Valley. And uh, and they've, they deserve it. They've been on a roll. They've now won, I believe, 12 games in a row. Yeah, and, well, I uh, think Coach Frederick said it. I think they lost to Wakona, a game that they didn't feel like they should have won, uh, shouldn't have lost. And ever since then, they regrouped and satisfied. I'm hoping the Boston Celtics do that <laughs> after, after a tough <laughs> loss on Tuesday night. Boy, I'll tell you. Uh, where they just uh, didn't finish the game off. But uh, they learned from it, and they're taking care of business. And, again, they're happy. they got smiles on their face, but they know they got work to yeah. to be done still. Again, it just doesn't get easier. It, uh, it's going to get tougher as the road goes along. And... Uh, Oh, it's going to get much tougher because tonight's opponent, tonight's opponent was a good, athletic, young opponent, but they're not, they're going to face a lot stronger teams down in the last two rounds. But Hoosick Valley tonight, by virtue of this commanding victory over Pope John Paul, will go to the final four in the Division Five MIAA tournament, and uh, we just want to see if we can get before we go off here a couple of players i know there's a lot of celebration and it's always an issue getting the players especially when we're up here uh you know to come up and and give us just a little bit of their time so they can uh, tell us a little bit about how they felt about uh, this particular game and, and the things that that happened here but uh uh, hopefully we'll have somebody coming up here in I've a moment. I've done two games this year, and I've been lucky enough to be in the loft both times. It's a great place to call the yeah. game, but it's often it's tough to get some <laughs> players up after. Yeah, it's uh, it, it, exactly. It's uh, isolating, as they say, but it's a great place. As you said, Jen, we love doing the games up here. We've got our technical crew with us up here, Peter Gentile. Of course, we want to thank, once again, Northern Berkshire Community Television and our simulcasting partner, uh, WMNB LP 107.1 for uh, tonight's simulcast of this MIAA quarterfinal matchup here at Hoosick Valley. And speaking of Hoosick Valley, we'll be back here again tomorrow night for the matchup between Hoosick Valley and Hopedale. And it's again, it's just a testament for Berkshire County basketball. You're saying we're going to be here back tonight. That that means you mean tomorrow night. That means that the, another team is playing. You get both the Blue Devils boys and girls teams playing. You get the Monument boys, the Connick boys, um, Pittsfield boys. I don't know if I'm missing anybody else, but uh, they got a lot of teams still playing basketball this late in the year, and uh, hopefully someone and many of them can take home state champions. And and interesting, on the floor now, Emma Mesworth on the floor talking with uh, Jacinta Felix from Jury. Uh, Jacinta will be playing uh, tomorrow night down at Palmer, and the Blue Devils looking for an opportunity to go to the Final Four as well. Uh, so we're going to be following that very, very closely uh, down at Palmer, and we wish our best And then the best jury, to the jury boys are going Saturday. If you want to see a good game and oh. take a little road trip, they're going to Pioneer Valley. Yep. Uh, it's tough to beat a team three times, but they beat them twice this year. Uh, Pioneer Valley, I, I uh, coached against their coach, uh, Scott Thayer, who is a yeah. longtime uh, Greenfield coach, I'll and he's going to have his team ready, and it's going to be a great ba basketball game if you can make it to Pioneer yeah. Valley, 2 o'clock Saturday. Outstanding, outstanding coach there, uh, and uh, outstanding. 
You got uh, Coach Frederick getting interviewed by the newspapers and the internet, I Berkshires. They got to come to, and respect live TV first. Right. <laughs> we we have that struggle. Uh, my uh, my comment, my producer Peter Gentile is is quick to acknowledge that that you know you got to you got to we're on TV. They're they they did they're on. A, I guess they're on a deadline, but uh, we're on TV. So and I know Coach Fredericks is talking. With uh, with his players, but and you see the veteran leadership in Coach Polari, uh, athletic director of both Drury and Huzik, to get the girls to cut down the net, and he's already putting the new net up for yep. tomorrow night's game. Yeah, so he won't have to worry about it tomorrow. That's for sure. But uh, yeah, no, he might have to cut down another net tomorrow. Uh, but Huzik will have their um, work cut out against Hopedale. I'm hoping to make it down tomorrow. I don't know what the schedule looks like, but uh, it's going to be uh, a great, exciting basketball game here tomorrow night. Hoosick Valley Boys versus Hopedale uh, for another trip possible to the Final Four. And we're going to have, I believe, Ashlyn Shore and MMS War. Coming up here, you get a chance to talk with the juniors of Hoosick Valley. Yeah, both of them had great games tonight, so uh, it's great that they get the nod to come up and, and get the mic in their hands. <laughs> well, we're going to have Ashlyn the Shore, and this is uh, some of the balance scoring we had here. We've got juniors Ashlyn the Shore and Emma Mesward. And guys, we were talking to them. Just a little bit ago, going through this uh, Division Five bracket for you guys, you know, you're get, the games are getting a little closer, you know, that's for sure. And and uh, it looked like uh, your your defense took uh, Pope John Paul out of their game early on here, Emma. Yeah, we knew that they were they had a lot of people who could get to the hoop and could make threes, and we that was really what we were focusing on. And. When you look at the balance scoring that you guys had tonight, Ashlyn, uh, you, very tough. And, 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 and uh, Coach Jacoby commented on it, the balance that you guys have. Three people in double figures, um, uh, five different players shooting three-pointers. It's tough for teams to defend that. Yes, we, our team, we can do it all around. Every, everyone on the team can do everything. We're an unselfish team. And that's what gets us to these places that where we're where we're getting right now. Well, we commented on that even late in the game. There was a great give and go there, uh, right with about a minute to go with one of the reserves from Hoosick Valley. It just shows, and it makes it very difficult, uh, Emma, for these teams to defend you. Yeah, we definitely are a very equal team, and no, and whoever's on the court, we're we're going to give it our all, and we produce pretty much every game so yeah. what I saw is you have a team that doesn't care who scores you just want to score more points than your opponent mm -hmm. I thought Emma you've had a great second half of the year and Ashton I was hoping you were a senior because I don't want to face you <laughs> yeah. coach coach was saying that you know we commented that at the beginning of the game every team needs somebody to kind of get the thing going you're kind of the engine of the team you keep things uh, on an even keel, uh, and Coach was saying, yeah. And Both of you had nine points in, uh, in the first half when Taylor, who was probably your leading scorer, was out with foul trouble, and you didn't miss the beat. So that's a credit to you guys because as the juniors, I thought you two took, took over the game in the second quarter. And that last pass by Luciano was to you on the baseline right. where mm -hmm. she caught it in the high post, you cut back door, and it was like, it was methodical. Yeah, and it, it was, it was uh, well done. Yeah, it was a thing of beauty, and you guys deserve uh, – to be going to the Final Four. You've had a great run here in the tournament. We'll hope to be covering you down at the Final Four at a spot yet to be determined, but uh, it should be a, a dandy. And, of course, I know you saw one of your friends, Jacinta Felix, here from Jury. Hopefully another uh, Northern Berkshire team will be in the Final Four. We wish, we wish, I'm sure you wish them the best of luck yeah. at this point. At this point, right? Enjoy it tonight and back to work tomorrow. But uh, good luck and bring it home to the Berkshires. Ashley and Shore and Emma Messwar uh, from the Hoosick Valley Hurricanes. Congratulations, lady. The Hoosick Valley Hurricanes are in the Final Four. Thank you. The final score here.
at Hoosick Valley is Hoosick Valley 60 and St. John, Pope John Paul uh, 34 for Peter Gentile and Ryan Palsy and my analyst sidekick here, John Jacoby. We want to say good night from Hoosick Valley and remind you we'll be right back here tomorrow night to see Hoosick Valley and Hopedale at 7 o'clock.